Hi, I'm Caleb. I've been using model trains and videos for years, but I don't have the best track record when it comes to customizations. I'm trying to get better at it, so join me as I dive into the world of miniature modeling. This is Caleb's Trains. This video is not made for kids. I will be showcasing dangerous tools and toxic materials that are potentially hazardous. Children should not have access to these, and please remember to use proper safety techniques. Thanks. If you were to ask me my favorite character from Thomas, I'd say it was Edward. But secretly, it's James. He's always so much fun when he's on screen, and being the only red engine, he definitely stands out. The Bachman model of James is incredibly flawed, and though they have recently updated some of the paint errors, it's not enough to save this outdated mold. He was going to need a makeover. Well, more like a do-over. James is supposed to be proud of his paintwork, so I suppose I'd better give him a reason to be. The 3D body shell was provided by the LBSC Thomas and printed by the train modeler in the UK. Immediately after curing, the sanding, priming, and filling had to begin. Those print lines won't get rid of themselves. Naturally, I had to go through a few rounds of this to get things smoothed out. James uh, then had to flee the country after an incident at the local Tesco, so I went back home to the US and busted out the red paint. I had originally considered a Rust-Oleum shade, cherry red, but it was too pink toned, and the Tamiya color had both the depth and vibrance I was looking for. I got a little overzealous and ended up laying the paint on a bit thick, creating noticeable drips, but they got sanded down. Here's a little tip. If you're painting outside, as you should be doing this in at least a ventilated space, don't put the setup on the surface of loose dirt, especially if it's fall and there are leaves falling and on the ground, because as you might imagine, the force of the spray paint causes all of that dirt to fly up and onto the paintwork. Lesson learned. Then it was off to the spa. Wait. No, okay, he was masked and ready for black, or at least I thought he was. A few things went wrong here. I had resprayed his red a few hours ago before applying the masking tape. That's not enough time! That could take up to a day. I did not know that, so I was greeted by streaks of tape impressions in the paint. This was before I discovered to me a masking tape, so not a clean seal either. Yeah, same day this happened. That was a bad day. Cause you had then you know what came next. I masked his smoke box this time and applied him with another coat of red. There was a little bit of leakage, but that could be fixed easily. After all that was sorted, it was time to figure out the lining. As you might have seen in previous videos, I had decided that I was going to do masking for the pinstriping. The first engine I did it on though was actually James. He's extra special because while other engines have just one color for their lining, James has two. Gold was first. It was challenging figuring out how to go about this. Some areas, like where the boiler meets the firebox, took longer than others. I call this method the paper dragon. It's not a perfect edge, but for my purposes, it'd do the trick. The dome was also left exposed. This was my first time back on the horse after this disaster. So I checked it twice, check, check. sent up a prayer, and reached for the aerosol. You don't know how relieved I was to see that it turned out. For the tender, I actually used a Bachman Edward tender that I removed the cab doors from. The Bachman James one was just too chunky and didn't have nice detailed axle boxes like Edward's. I was trying to see if I could cut my own stencils for the- nope, it didn't- it didn't work, we're moving on. Yeah, next. I thought the chassis should have been the easiest part. No. I had my old Bachman James all ready to use, and while removing the shell and footplate, somehow managed to disconnect the wires from their connection to the base. The actual <laughs> This was going to be a really tricky job to solder them back on, but the crazy thing is, I don't own a soldering iron, so I wouldn't be doing that. I was pretty frustrated, until I realized what I had to do. It was probably a good thing I'd be using a new chassis anyway, as I tend to put my models through quite a lot, which does take a toll on them. I replaced the standard wheels with ones for Donald and Douglas. I also dremeled out some rod detailing and cut out the eye mechanism gears. Haven't cut quite enough away yet, so he's riding a little high, but he's running. I added his running board details, and then it was time to fit him with his handrails. I used stanchions and music wire from Hobbylink for these. 
The shell comes with the holes in their proper places, ready for installation, but the knobs were slightly larger than these inserts allowed, so I used a very small Dremel bit to make these holes just a little larger. I slotted the knobs into place and was on the last one. It was a bit stubborn, so I pushed a little harder to make it fit. It always fits. Eventually. Then there was trouble. This was shattering, literally. After that happened, I just put it down and didn't look at it again. I actually went on a little trip for a week. It was nice to get away from the immense pain that is modeling. When I returned, I put some filler in the gap, but wasn't sure how to paint it. I'd learned a lesson with Percy on the seam lines you get when masking paint unevenly. I sought the wise counsel of Brendan, and he recommended that I cut a hole through some paper, mask off around the disaster site, and spray through the cutout so that the paint was more targeted. So I did. It wasn't a spotless fix, but since the handrails would be going over it anyway, I wasn't too worried about it. He was coming together, but he still needed his black lining. I used vinyl cutouts and started with the tender. It was pretty tricky getting the outside and inside aligned. I masked the negative space and sprayed it with black. With the yellow applied in vinyl, I had to look for a second- Oh. It's not even! My life is pain! It's not terrible, but once you notice, well, you notice it. If I had all the time and resources in the world, I'd redo this. But I've got a schedule to keep, so James is just going to have to take a piece of humble pie and deal with it. I did use the actual vinyl pieces for the wheel arches, and then when I tried to do the same for the cab section, I couldn't seem to apply it without it getting wobbly, so I opted to mask it instead. Twenty-four hours later. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and, you know, doing all the usual YouTube stuff. It'd mean a lot. Thank you.